With electrons, things aren't so simple. The standard approach to the structure of matter is based on the idea that all matter is made up of something, and it seems that physicists breathed a sigh of relief when they discovered the first leptons. Leptons are called particles that are made up of themselves. And here, the electron is of particular interest to us. Besides the fact that the electron may be one of the first particles that completely stop dividing, the indivisibility of the electron and the fact that it is a lepton tell us that some basic interactions, say static electricity, electric current, the transfer of electrons between objects, and so on, could be explained by, and finally based on, this convenient model where a particle is a kind of physical ball, and this physical ball can be passed from one object to another, and so on. If this particle should have some characteristic size, the reference book lists the size of the electron, which is defined as the probabilistic region where the electron exists in space. That is, this is not the actual size of the electron. It's not like we took a caliper and measured it. Rather, it's a probabilistic region where, theoretically, the electron might appear. This once again emphasizes that, at least with electrons, and most likely with other such particles as well, things are not so simple. In other words, one might assume that the electron is not really a particle at all, but rather a certain amount of energy with which the field, the one we talked about, the zero appropriate field, oscillates. And it is this oscillation of the field that manifests the properties we are used to seeing as a particle. In this scenario, the particle is energy. Energy describes the type of this particle. A specific particle is described by which of the fields is oscillating, and all subsequent interactions must be described as interactions of fields, where particles, which are oscillations of the field with different energies, influence each other. One way or another, even the standard approach faces some failure here. In 2006, experiments and studies were conducted that made it possible to suggest that under very specific conditions, the supposedly indivisible electron, which is a lepton, is also made up of something. For a long time we have assumed that there are indivisible particles and that sooner or later we should find these indivisible particles for each type of divisible object. And here the experiments conducted in 2006 indicate that, under very specific conditions, the indivisible electrons, which are leptons, might also be composed of something. To some extent this is, well, quite a revolutionary statement.